Hello there, and yes, I do have a meat tenderizer with me. And the reason why I have it with me is because I'm reminded of a great show. A stunt show. And no, it's not the Dude Sons, it's not Dirty Sanchez. But a stunt show which introduced me to the world of stunt shows. A stunt show which is perhaps the most famous and most provocative of all. Yes, that being Jackass. And as the old saying goes, if you gotta be dumb, you gotta be tough. Anyway, this is the review for the first film, Jackass the Movie. One of the first stunt shows to actually do a movie. And is it good? Well, let me tell you. Jackass was a hugely successful stunt show. It spawned three good seasons, and of course, the first thing you'd expect them to do is make a movie. But how exactly can you do a movie based on something that's essentially reality TV? It's a bit like Big Brother or uh, the Osbournes making a movie dedicated to their lives. At the end of the day, it was quite a tough task for Jeff Tremaine, but he managed to do it, and here he is Jackass the movie. I say dude since then. <laughs> Jackass the movie doesn't really have any real plot, unlike, say, Dirty Sanchez the movie, where there was sort of a plot. Jackass the movie is essentially a compilation of a load of stunts. It starts off with the Jackass always in a trolley, the traditional trolley sound which is used in the show, going down a hill where it crashes into a market with Johnny Oxfield shouting, Hello, I'm Johnny Oxfield, and welcome to Jackass. From there we have a bunch of stunts ranging from physical to gross out to humorous little pranks and of course the old man which would become one of the most famous staples of the Jackass movies. Of course overall the Jackass movie it got a positive review, it was a very successful film. Uh, too many surprise, um, but my personal opinion is probably the weakest of the Jackass films. It's funny, you wouldn't really expect the first film in a series to be the weakest, but here it truly is. In my opinion, it doesn't have a lot of fun stunts. Sure, you have a few good ones, for example, you have the um, the lorry, the disco lorry stunt, which I thought was hilarious, yet for whatever reason, Jackass boys in the commentary seem to dislike a lot though I thought it was actually quite fun. Um, a lot of the Steve-O stuff was of course hilarious, such as the tattoo, uh, the off-road tattoo I should say, and also the tightrope. But aside from that, you don't really have as much funny moments in comparison to its sequels. I also feel like the Jackass boys seem to not know what they were doing, and this is revealed during the commentary and behind the scenes. Jackass boys seem to be new to this idea and unaware of how exactly to approach it. And it's kind of obvious in some of these stunts. Half of the time they seem almost bored and lifeless. Even Johnny Knoxville during the muscle stimulator doesn't even say it in an enthusiastic tone. He's sort of just dull and drab. And that kind of puts a hindrance to some of the attitudes throughout the uh, stunts. I suppose them being fun and almost lighthearted and sometimes gross. We don't really get that with some of the stunts here. We sort of get them meandering around unknown. Uh, of what to do, <laughs> but does that destroy the film? No, I still find it fun, I still find it hilarious, but as I watched it over and over again I began to like it less as the years went by, in comparison to its sequels which I seem to enjoy a lot more. Do I hate the film? Of course not. However, I will say there is one stunt which I just cannot stand and that's the paper cuts. I... ugh. It's one of the most cringeworthy and most horrific looking stunts. And every time that stunt appears on the movie, I always have to look away. It's always interesting also to look at the behind the scenes and the deleted uh, footage. Such as such as the uh, ending stunt, which was a Rube Goldberg experiment. It's funny how this was going to be a big, spectacular ending uh, for the film. And in the actual film, we just get... Johnny Knoxville will be thrown into a river, and that's that, with Taylor throwing his confetti, and it's kind of a dull ending. In comparison to what the ending would have been, which it honestly looked amazing, and it's a shame that that never really uh, came about. It's a shame that that never worked. Um, 
Um, yeah, I, I think the film does suffer from a lot of that deleted scene problem where a lot of the deleted scenes are a lot of better than what we got in the actual film and uh, not saying a lot because a lot of the deleted scenes I think were deservingly so um, deleted because they were kind of bad but the ending itself even though it was a failed ending I would have preferred as opposed to a basic ending with Johnny Knox being thrown into a river I thought that was kind of dull in my opinion um, but with the other deleted scenes, they are kind of bad, and yeah, I can understand why a lot of them got deleted, uh, with the exception of the ending, which I, I'm still saddened about that we never got. <laughs> Overall, if I were to rate this movie, I'd, I'd actually be quite harsh to it and give it around a 60%. Um, it's not a bad movie, by no means, but it's certainly not the best. It's certainly uh, not as good as it will become uh, in future. Jackass films. So, yeah. Coming up next would be Jackass number two, which was filmed many years later. This time, all the Jackass boys had a lot more experience in comparison to uh, the first one where they hardly had any. And this one had a fun uh, behind the scenes history, uh, as Steve O was on drugs quite a lot during this time, and they had to essentially make him free from drugs in order to film the uh, movie. But we'll get to Jackass and 2 when we get there. For the time being, thank you for watching and goodbye.